Now I understand that being on at 10 p.m. Eastern on a Friday night is not an ideal time slot. I get that. And I also temper my expectations for a show in that time slot in terms of its overall viewers, its performance in the key demo. Because the reality is it does not matter how great of a show that you would put out for that hour on Friday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. You have a ceiling. And you're not going to get above that. You really aren't. And the absolute ceiling of what you probably would ever be able to see with AEW Rampage was that episode where CM Punk made his return to AEW. Or just wrestling in general. Like that is by far the highest viewership you probably would anticipate Rampage on its current network, current time slot ever getting. So that type of number is not realistic. 600 to 700,000 viewers, solid performance in the demo, should be more realistic. That said though, if you're going to do this show every week, you need to put your best foot forward and put the best you can out there. And what I saw from Rampage this week certainly was not evidence of that. Now the opener, certainly fine. You know, once again, our best politician in this country, Brian Danielson, 2024. How can you be a Brian Danielson fan and not want to vote for president for him in 2024? I don't know. But this Eliminator Tournament semifinal match between him and Eddie Kingston. Okay, this was good. This was pretty good. Not really much of anything for me to complain about here. You know, I think from an in-ring standpoint, Daniel Bryan works in AEW because you're able to present him a little more seriously. You're able to present him as a little more legit and a little more badass because, frankly, it is more believable in an AEW than it is a WWE. It's just the lay of the land. That is the reality. And here is a match that people would want to see. There are some types of stakes on the line. This is exactly the type of shit that should be on Rampage. You only got an hour. You got to get in and get on with it right away. No time to dawdle around and fumble fuck through the show. Problem with this is, though, is the reports were that a lot of people left after this match, which is a product of trying to take this after freaking Dynamite on Wednesdays. You know, and my salvo here to Tony Khan is, you want to pretend like you're a big boy in wrestling. You want to pretend like it's on with Vince McMahon. You pretend like you really want to compete. Well, then you know what, bitch? Compete. Go live with this shit. Structure your shows better, so that way you don't have a bunch of people leaving after Kingston versus Danielson. Although, I shut the fuck up about it. And in general, I wish everybody involved with this from an AEW or WWE side would focus on their own crap, their own lane. Stay in your lane. you got enough other problems and enough other things to solve for on your own. You don't need to worry about anything else. Because pre pathetically predictable as it was a couple of weeks ago, the whole big head-to-head, -head, everybody ends up a loser. Gee, I wonder who could see that coming. But again, I point to this match, like this is great. This is the type of stuff that should be on Dynamite. And then you follow that up with a CM Punk interview that is more of a confrontation between him and Eddie Kingston. And a lot of people are geeking out about that, but the reality is, is that if you're not really going to do a story here and it's just going to be a one-off match, then fuck this too. Like CM Punk has been there for a couple of months now. It is time to actually get him into a real story. What they're doing with him is stupid. Stop pacifying. Stop justifying. Stop defending. Stop excusing. You know this is stupid. Call it out. If you wanted to go into a two-month program between Eddie Kingston and CM Punk, fine. Then go there. But if this is just to set up some one-off match, fuck that. Why would you spend that much money to bring in a CM Punk and do this shit with him? Just really, really weird. And I'm sure I will be in the minority here talking about Matt Seidel versus Dante Martin, but I didn't like it because I don't care about these guys. I should have to care about these guys. And they don't. And you're really telling me of all the stuff that you could have done on Rampage, this is one of the three best matches you could have possibly put out there? Again, the show is only an hour. I understand it's on a later time slot, so not as many people are going to watch. So you probably don't want to bust your nut and blow your load on everything on this Friday night time slot. But in the meantime, this is an hour of primetime national cable television. Put your best foot forward. Matt Seidel versus Dante Martin is absolutely not putting your best foot forward. It just isn't.
And some of you are going to say, well, I would think you'd want somebody like a Dante Martin to be pushed. Well, put him in a spot where he matters more. That's what I'm saying. This cannot possibly be one of the three best matches you could have put on the show. And that especially holds true for this dumbass trick-or-treat no DQ match. I know there are a lot of Britt Baker fans out there, and I understand that. Understand some people don't get the Ab Abaddon gimmick. I think it's fucking stupid to a degree myself. But some of you probably just like Abaddon because you got a fat old booty. And you, you, she, I was surprised on Friday night. Yes, indeed. She does have a dump truck booty. I was stunned. Usually, not, usually white girls down my jam, but I'm just saying. Like, it's there. Uh, but this match was absolute booty. Absolutely booty. For everything that the main event of Dynamite on Wednesday was, this was not. Utilizing the Randy Orton <laughs> fucking table spot. Not once, but twice. The table won't break. It's no selling. Just like the fans should have no sold this shit. Like it was sloppy. It was botchy. Oh, we're using thumbtacks. Oh, she's bleeding. Ah, who gives a crap? My gimmick is one thing, but you actually got to know what the hell you're doing in the ring. And it's clear still that Abaddon is green as goose shit and doesn't know what the hell she's doing. And sometimes you can hide that type of stuff in a match like this. And other times you can't. When you even see some of the more ardent, loyal AEW backers, AEW defenders kind of questioning this match or even shitting on this match a little bit, then you know that you have missed the mark badly. Very, very badly. And part of the problem here again is, you know, even if you like the Abaddon gimmick, why the fuck should you? In terms of Dynamite, in terms of Rampage, I don't care about Dark Revolution, whatever the fuck. Elevation, whatever the hell it is. The shows that people actually watch... You hardly ever see her. Why all of a sudden is she just getting this random ass match against your freaking women's champion? Again, I come down to the point of, of all the ladies you could have chose for this spot and this opportunity, was Abaddon really the most appropriate? Was she the most fitting? Was she the most deserving? And in all of those cases, the answers are an un unequivocal no. Like Eddie Kingston, Brian Danielson is exactly the type of match that I talked about earlier in this review that you should have on this show. More of that. Less of this crap. You can put all the stipulations in the world you want on it, but stupid is as stupid does. And when you don't feature these ladies or talents in general in a way that matters, then their matches by and large are not going to matter. Never mind the fact that the match itself was just kind of brutal. Not brutal in the vicious, like physical you know, this was holy shit type of stuff. Just brutal in terms of it was bad. Really, really bad. So no, I wasn't a huge fan of Rampage because I look at this one hour every Friday night and say, you got to make the best out of it. You got to make the most out of it and give the fans something memorable if you're going to expect them to stay up this late on a Friday night and watch your wrestling product. And AEW, outside of that first match, absolutely, I'm sorry, did not deliver that this week.